In this video, I talk about multiple linear regression or estimation of parameters in a linear model. The video is based on my script example, linear regression. Now, what is a linear model? Well, let's assume we have observations, y, see line 6, which are linear functions of unknown regression parameters beta plus an unknown constant offset c plus a vector of random errors or a vector of random noise. So y is equal to a matrix capital X times beta plus c plus the vector eps of random errors. The matrix capital X is also called the design matrix of the linear model and each column of capital X corresponds to one predictor variable. Each row of X corresponds to a certain setting of these predictor variables and this row then generates an observation Y. So let's start by defining a concrete linear model. We start by setting the regression parameters. There are four of them in this example and for the sake of simplicity I just take the integers from 1 to 4 to be the true values of the regression parameters. So we have four predictor variables and we have 16 observations which correspond to 16 different settings of the four predictor variables. Now I generate randomly a design matrix. It's 16 by 4. Each row corresponds to a certain setting of the four predictor variables and each column corresponds to one of the four predictor variables. In general, the design matrix must have maximum rank. So the maximum rank is 4, which is indeed the rank of x. We define the intercept to be 2, and now we can compute the response variables according to this particular linear model. So these are the true values, so to speak. We still have to add the random errors. So we define a vector sig, which contains the standard deviations of the 16 random errors, one for each observation. I generate these standard deviations randomly. You can see their values in the command window. Now frequently these values of the standard deviations are not known. In this case uh, we cannot use the information about the sigmas. So in this case uh, we perform an unweighted fit as you will see in a minute. So let's now generate a vector of observations uh, using these values of sigma. But now we assume that we don't know these values, so uh, we cannot use this information about the standard deviations. So how can we perform the estimation of beta this, the aim of the regression is to estimate the unknown regression parameters plus the offset. E, to this purpose, we create what is called a data set object. So ds is an object of the class data set. And we assign names to the predictor variables 
and to the observations. And the names are, as you see in line 32, x1, x2, x3, x4, and y. These names are, of course, completely arbitrary. You can choose them as you like. Now, ds has a number of fields. One field for each predictor variable, one field for the observations, and one field for some properties. The fit itself is done by the function fitLM, fit linear model. It has two arguments. The first argument is the data set, which contains both capital X and the observations Y. And the second argument is a string, which describes the kind of uh, dependence of Y on the predictor variables. This string means Y is a linear combination of the four predictor variables plus the offset. So the offset is default. If you don't want the offset, you have to uh, tell the function that offset is not needed. And we'll see in a minute how this is done. So let's perform the fit. What we get from the fit is an object of the class linear model. So let's see MDL1. Well, we can just make a step in the script and you see MDL1 is an object of the class linear models. What are the field names of this object? Well, they are the residuals, the fitted, diagnostics, etc., etc. Most important for us is the field coefficients, which contains, among other things, the estimated parameters. There are also some methods which we will not use in the following. So let's extract the estimated regression parameters from this object. Now this, uh, these parameters are in the field coefficients and subfield estimate. If I just have a look at MDL1 coefficients, coefficients, I get a table with four columns. We'll need just the first one, the estimated values. The other ones are the standard error, a t-statistic, and a p-value. Uh, this p-value tell you how significant is the contribution of the predictor to the estimate. The smaller the p-value, the more significant the more important is the predictor. So let's just have a look at the estimated regression parameters. They can be seen in the command window. I recall the true values are 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we are pretty close to the true values. We can also have a look at the residuals of the regression, which are the differences of the observations and the predicted value of y given the estimated model. We can also try the fit uh, without the intercept. In this case, the string looks like this in line 46. So y is a linear combination of the four predictors and minus one means no intercept is estimated. So we assume that the intercept is zero and the regression parameters are estimated under this assumption. Of course, we can expect a bad fit because there is an intercept. It's two, it's not zero. So let's have a look at the Uh, estimated parameters, 
true values are 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's not that bad, but uh, we can also have a look at the residuals. And you see that the residuals are now much larger than before. A formal way of judging which fit is better is the log likelihood. Let's have a look at the log likelihood of the fit with intercept. So this is MDL1 log likelihood. This is minus 2.7. Uh, the, the absolute size doesn't tell us anything, but this is very useful for comparing two fits. So let's have a look at the likelihood, the log likelihood of the second fit, and this is much smaller. So the larger the likelihood or the log likelihood, the better is the fit. We can also have a look at the mean squared error of the two fits. MDL1.MSE, this is field MSE, it's 0.12, and the mean squared error of the second model is more than twice as large. So clearly the first fit, the one with the intercept estimated, is the better one. Now this, uh, this estimation procedure is based on the principle of least squares and we know that least squares estimators are not robust. They are not robust, which means they are sensitive to outliers, to wrong measurements uh, or uh, distorted measurements. So let's create an outlier in this data set. I copy the data set DS to another data set, which is called DS out L. And now I modify one of the observations, the sixth one actually, I multiply it by three. So these are the observations in the original data set and these are the observations in the modified data set. And you see there's just one difference in position 6. The observation is three times bigger than in the original data set. Now let's try to fit uh, this data set with intercept. And now you see that the estimated parameters are totally wrong. Let's have a look at the residuals. They are very large. The sixth one is the largest, but you see that this single outlier distorts the fit or biases the fit in such a way that all the residuals are suddenly uh, much too large. So uh, we can also have a look at the log likelihood function. So and this is very, very small. So this indicates a very bad fit. Now, what can we do uh, to, to make the influence of the outlier smaller or even to remove it completely? Well, this uh, can be done by making the fit robust. So the function fitLM has an option robust opts. If we turn this option on, then we have a robust fit and this fit tries to find out which of the observations causes trouble and then uh, downweights this observation so that it has less or no influence on the final estimate. So let's just switch off the robust option and let's see what happens. So these are the residuals, sorry, these are the 
uh, estimated parameters and we see they are back to normal. They are close to 2, 1, 2, 3. We can also see the residuals. This is very informative. We see that most residuals are small again, with the exception of the sixth one, which is now, which is now very large. So this means that uh, the influence of this observation is very small because the other residuals are no longer distorted by the outlier. If you want to make sure which one is the outlier, we can also look at the weights of the robust fit. This is in this vector. And here you see that observation 6 has zero weight, so it drops out completely from the fit. The other weights, they should be not too small, they should be close to 1. Uh, most of them are. Some of them, the smallest one is around 0.7, which is still acceptable. So it's clear from the weights of this robust fit that observation number 6 is the outlier. Now I want to show you how you can use the information about the sigma, the standard deviations of the observations, if you have it. This can be done by a so-called weighted fit. We introduce weights which control the influence of the observations on the estimate. And the rule is smaller sigma, so more higher precision means larger weight. Large sigma, small precision, means a small weight. And it can be shown that the optimal weights are the uh, fraction 1 over the standard deviation squared. So we compute a vector of weights, which is 1 over sig squared. In this way, precise observations get a large weight, imprecise observations get a smaller weight. We use the same data set, not the modified one, we use the original data set, DS. Uh, we use the model with intercept, but now we add a parameter weights followed by the vector of the weights. So this is now the weighted fit. We can extract the estimated parameters in the same way as before. They are again close to 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can also compute the likelihood. Now this likelihood is of course not directly comparable to the likelihood of the unweighted fit because the weighted fit uses a different model than the weighted fit. If you want to judge the quality of the fit, uh, one, one data, one set of observations is not enough. We would have to study the quality of the fit which means the difference between the estimated parameters and the true parameters on a large sample of observations. So we would have to generate a large number of uh, observations from the same model, and then we could compare the weighted fit, the results of the weighted fit, uh, with the results of the unweighted fit. And this will be the topic of assignment 11.